Hey everybody, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We're constantly updating it with new content and never seen before content. So if you want to get the latest from Harvest, hit the subscribe button. Israel, you know, it really is a beautiful country. I mean, think about it. There's such rich history here. Literally, Jesus Christ walked in this very place. Just imagine for a moment what it would have been like. You hear people in the streets, they're mingling, and the merchants and traders are preparing their wares, opening their stores for business. The hustle and bustle of the morning, the birds are chirping as the city wakes up and the walls come to life. You hear prayers and songs offered up all around the city. You've got the smell of open fires with herring or sardines being cooked. You've got shashuka and baba ganoush, labne and other local delicacies along with fresh fruits and vegetables. And don't forget about the freshly baked bread. Then you imagine for a moment, this is not only where Jesus walked, this is also where the apostles walked. You would have heard the voice of Paul preaching a sermon or the voice of Peter speaking to a person to be healed. Then all of a sudden you hear voices, strong voices that you may have heard outside of the gates, men whom I call heroes of faith as they move together through the streets. Imagine the conversations between the apostles John and Paul and the others, and, and suddenly there's a hush among the crowd as Jesus himself approaches. Yes, he was God in human form, but let's not forget, he was a man, the son of a carpenter who walked where others walked, who talked to children playing games, who broke bread with his disciples, who purchased herbs and spices from the merchants. This city, rich in history, rich in food, and culture, the city of Jerusalem, was the place where Jesus walked. Israel is bordered by Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. And the country of Israel spans a total area of 20,770 square kilometers. That's basically the size of New Jersey. Yet Israel is considered to be the epicenter of the world. The city of Jerusalem, located on a plateau in the Judean mountains between the Mediterranean and the Dead Sea, is considered to be the epicenter of Israel. Hey, think about this. The children of Israel wandered around in this very desert for 40 years. Hey, why was that? Is it because men were in charge and they just didn't want to stop and ask for directions? Or was it because they were wandering around and around in circles? Yeah, I think it was the latter. Abraham fought a war here. David hid from King Saul in the caves right around here. And of course, the story of Masada took place and King Herod actually built that as his getaway palace. Hey, I'm all about history and tradition and I can walk and I've ridden camels and I've ridden donkeys. But today I'm visiting the Dead Sea and I plan to put a lot more horsepower into this journey. On this day trek, my friend Ido Kanan, a seventh generation Israeli, and my beautiful wife Kathy are all buckled in our Jeep. The terrain's pretty rough and rocky, and we're up for adventure as we set off in this four-wheel excursion. As a guy, you know where you're headed and you know something about where you're going. And in this case, he just overflows with a wealth of knowledge and a sense of direction. Mesmerized by his stories, his insight, and accounts from scripture, our two-hour journey came to life with some vivid depictions. So when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, uh, is this what, he, what it would have looked like to him? Pastor Greg, it's exactly how it looked out to him. Because what is 2,000 years? Look around you, the same formations that you see of those mountains and of those hills, of those narrow passes, that's what 
our Lord so. Yeah. Every morning and every evening here in the desert. As you can see, there's no electricity. There's nothing that is of the 20, 21st century. Everything you see over here is natural, going back all the way thousands and thousands of years ago. This is the wilderness. This is, there's nothing here and miles and miles away. And this is where it was chosen to take our Lord for 40 days and 40 nights away from any civilization, to tempt him in any way possible. And that's where he was, in this area, because this is the Judeo wilderness. Oh, that is an interesting one, folks. Love that. You're gonna fill that, and that little book is a slide of the uh, left back wheel. Oh, there we go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Did it better than him. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was like the other one looks so hairy, and I then I hit nothing. Padded bars back there. Just hold on, Monk. Yeah, exactly. This is crazy. It was in 1947 that a young Bedouin shepherd discovered in these Qumran caves some well-preserved written remains, and then later, in 1949, archaeologists excavated what were later to be referred to as the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, Pastor, the Dead Sea Scrolls, do you believe in luck? No. Good. Do you believe that things happen just as they happen? No. So what do you think the Dead Sea Scrolls were found? to confirm uh, what is taught already in scripture. Amen, and you're so right. At a certain point, God uh, decided, okay, I'm gonna bring my people back to the land. I've got to prove to the world that they have the right to a true deed. And what is the mm. deed? The Bible. Yes. So let me find them, let me make them find the oldest one, and that's 2,000 yes. years old, that if anyone comes to say, hey, come on, what you have today is not what they would had 2,000 years ago, yeah. you can prove it. That's amazing. And that's the way I'll put it together. Yeah. Look straight oh, ahead. More out. That's the Dead Sea. Wow. Yeah, I've been to Israel many times, but I have to say, this is one of the highlights of all of my journeys. As we ascended up a hill, we then peaked the ridge and you see the magnificent Dead Sea lying below. And when I say lying below, that would be the case even standing at normal sea level. The Dead Sea's elevation is 1,400 feet below sea level. Upon our arrival at the day base camp, we were greeted and treated to a traditional Israeli picnic, complete with lamb kebabs cooking on open flames, hummus, freshly baked pita bread, tabbouleh salad, and baklava for dessert. Very nice. When David wrote Psalm 23, he was probably running from Saul. You think he was here in the wilderness, and when he wrote Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in the wilderness, what would that have, what would he have been thinking of then? We just drove through the wilderness in the afternoon. I was showing you the shadows of uh, the uh, sun reflecting on the valleys and the slopes. Mm. You saw how they moved. Mm. That's what David was talking about. Mm -hmm. You saw it with your own eyes. And why do I say that? because nothing has changed for the last 2,000 years. That topography, those mountains, those slopes, those valleys, those wadis, the same thing that he saw and was inspired to write that song. You know, when we look at Israel today, you know, you showed us a map of the United States and there's a, a little representation of Israel which is around the size of New Jersey. It's minuscule and yet so many people are fighting over this land why is the land of Israel so important for a Jewish person today, and important to you in particular? Well, this is where it all started. This is where it began. Yeah. This is where Abraham brought Isaac, but he sacrificed. Yeah. This is where he was taught. The first covenant took place here on a mountain, and that is known as Mount Moriah. Yes. That's where the first and the second temple were built. That's where our Lord went into that temple. There he learned, there he studied. And I do believe during those 30 years that we don't know much about uh, our Lord Jesus. 
he was there at the temple. Up on that mountain, that represent the covenant of the Jewish people with uh, God Almighty. So God has made this covenant with the Jewish people and you told us, you asked us the question, why do you think the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered and what was your answer? I asked you, I said, do you believe in luck? And you said, no way. Right. Do you believe in chance? He said, no way. What I eventually followed by those questions, I said, me neither. I do believe that whatever happens, when we find something, that's when God wants us to find something. When we're blessed with something, that's when God wants us to be blessed with something. And here comes 1947. Wow. The Lord have promised in the past that he will gather his children back after 2,000 years right. into the land. Yep. Now, he's fulfilling. He is fulfilling that prophecy, but he needs to show the common world that the deed that the Jews have with the Lord, with God Almighty, is there in paper, black and white. So there are right. many that would say, hey, what we've got today is different than what we had 2,000 years ago, and it have changed. Ladies and gentlemen, dear pastor, mm -hmm. Eddie, the Bible that we have found in the Dead Sea by Qumran is exactly the same mm -hmm. as the Bible that we have today. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that today you have chapters that are numbered. You have verses that are numbered. Then, no way, yes. it was all letters. Yeah. That's the only difference between then and today. So, God wanted to find the deed that shows the world that we have the right for this land. And it's there at the shrine of the book for everybody to sell anyone that doubt. Israel is relatively small in size, but oh, it's so mighty. And I really agree with what Ido said. God wanted the Dead Sea Scrolls to be discovered so the world would know of the Jewish people's right and inheritance to the land of Israel. Of course, that is found in scripture and the Dead Sea Scrolls just confirm what we have known all along. This land belongs to the Jewish people and Jerusalem is their capital. You know, I find this interesting. Today, Israel is no longer dusty little roads leading in and out of small villages and towns. Now there are thriving cities. Filled with culture and art and outstanding schools and major universities, the world's 55th largest export economy, leading the world in military advancement, cutting edge tech, and the world of medical science, Jerusalem is a modern city complete with commerce, retail, finance, and it's one of the world's leading destinations for tourism.